for AI. Uh, and I'm going to explain a little bit about uh, what I mean by continuous learning and reusing. It's a very simple concept. I chose just one topic to share with you, and then we can uh, have questions if you want. So let's delve into this problem of what's called problem solving in AI. So AI is not deep learning, AI is not data per se, AI is more about also reasoning. So one of the classical problems of AI, actually motivated by the beginnings of AI, uh, were about how do you solve, uh, how do you play chess, or how do you actually uh, have a robot that moves around? So there was a lot of like, how do you say, desire to come up with solutions to problems that were. And one of the contributions of AI was to really uh, define what does it mean to solve a problem. And basically it became this form, the, the following statement. Okay, given a state, some kind of initial state that you define being, uh, in our particular case, can be like a set of like literals. This is true, the door is open, there are these many chairs a description of the state, and a goal statement, I want to be somewhere. And the important thing is this concept of a domain knowledge, which is a, a set of actions you can perform in the domain, turn left, turn right, go forward, which are defined not in terms of just A1, A2, A3, A4, but they are defined in terms of like what needs to be true before the action takes place, and what is the, the changes to the state, the effect of the action, uh, to the state before the action is performed? So now you have this problem of having said, these are the things you can do. You can paint, you can open the door, you can like cook, you can do all of these things. Every single of these little actions is defined in terms of its preconditions and its effect. Actual state, you are given an initial state uh, that basically says that uh, I want, this is how I start, this is where I want to end, and the problem becomes how do we find a sequence of actions that take me from the initial state to this final state in which the goal statement is verified, satisfied. So this is like ways or route planning is always about this problem. The only thing that you have to think about is, believe it or not, this is an NP-complete, even NP-hard problem, because of the combinatorics. Think about like if you want to decide how to play chess or something. You are in this initial situation and all these actions can be applied. And then in next situation, you start planning. What if I do this one? I'm in this new state. And again, many actions can be applied. And then you start thinking, what if I'm in this state and I take this action followed by this action? Again, many actions. So you have a search problem of combinatorial nature, nature in most of the AI planning problems. And AI planning problems are used not only in route planning for which we have heuristics and we can do optimal planning using like uh, admissible heuristics, but other planner, planning like uh, 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 planning the scheduling classes in uh, specific, with many constraints of people, size, time, preferences, you name it. So all of these problems, and the reason why I tell you this and the reason why I chose you this is because all of these problems, whenever you go to, uh, to think about a um, company, to think about solving problems in the real world, many problems, decision-making problems are of this nature finding all possible solutions. Okay, so eventually you are going to, there are things that are popping on my screen, but thank goodness you don't see them there. They're like things here that they want, to, oh, let, oh, anyway, I was going to turn off the Wi-Fi. But anyway, so what matters here is for us to understand that like, this is, the only thing I'm going to tell you is like some kind of smart way of doing this. So what happens is the following. Uh, one of the techniques that I will tell you about today is that is this what we call continuous learning. And continuous learning is something that, unfortunately, we are not used to think like this because we like to think about we have data, we feed it to some neural net, we do something, and magically it's classified, it's done. Continuous learning is kind of this concept that we should solve problems, have algorithms that solve problems, 
based on solutions to past problems. So this is like a new method of thinking that you are going to have an algorithm and this, that solves a problem and then basically stores the solution and the rationale for the solution. And when a new problem comes, you retrieve similar problems and you basically reuse, replay, and eventually because you have solved similar problems, you solve this new problem much faster. So it's, it's and I, I tell you one thing, why am I so sensitive to this problem now? It's because, believe it or not, um, uh, now that I am at JP Morgan, there is this problem of consistency. So if you give a loan to someone that has $10,000 in the bank and then tomorrow someone comes with 15,000, you better be consistent in these decisions. Our machine learning, machine learning algorithms we expect the model to come up with the same answer, but they do not come up with an answer based on their past experience. They don't, they are not consistent. They are not monotone. They do not like uh, uh, scale their decisions as a function of what they have done in the past. So this is a big problem. So for you, for your science, data is very good, but basically what matters a lot in real life is to have AI systems that can build upon what they solved in the past. Now, I'm going just to show a few slides here because I want to then move to the policy reuse. These are like from all, all the way from all, almost my PhD thesis, but it, it doesn't matter what it says. What matters is the structure. I want you to understand that the way we solve problems, like I was telling you, I'm in this action, uh, in this state, I can take these many actions, is a search tree. A search tree will have some node here and then eventually enumerates all the possible things and then pursues and some of them fail. So you go back, you try another one. So this is how this is all done algorithmically to solve a planning problem is that you keep going find a solution. And let's say this branch of this search tree is the solution. You now know how to achieve the goal after you explored all, all other possible alternatives, a gigantic search tree full of like alternatives, failing, 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 not exploring, and then magically you have this. And so what this algorithm does is that it then saves these particular kind of sequence of things, but it does something in addition to just remember the solution and save it somewhere. It also saves a little bit of why this was the solution found, which we call the the solution uh, rationale. So it's going to say that this particular node, the N2 node, uh, was like this particular node that the other sibling nodes all failed. So at least you're going to know, oh, the reason why the solution is open that door is because I tried to open that and open this and open that, and none of those succeeded. So it's not because that door was anything good, it's because that was the last one of the choices I I, I, I checked after finding others. So this is very important because next time, if you have a key to that door, maybe it's closer than that, and then you could go somewhere else. So think about these explanations to actually enable you to eventually reuse a solution. But this is all saved, and then it's actually re uh, uh, put into a memory of problem-solving episodes. And uh, here, it doesn't matter. And then uh, what happens is that eventually you go and retrieve them. You index them by the right things and you retrieve. And by the way, I'm going to use just here this opportunity to ask you if you, and if you know why Google searches things so fast. You know, the, the internet is gigantic. And do you have an idea why in the world these, uh, these, these uh, how do you say, these uh, searches are so immediate? And the reason why they're so immediate, you can watch a very beautiful kind of video on, about this Google search on the internet is public, is one way or another, they really copy the whole internet to their, their own servers and index it in a way that eventually it's just very fast to access that index. So they are not going to my web page somewhere at CMU when you search for Manuel of Laws. They are going to Manuela Vlos, they are going to whatever web page they have saved of yesterday, very well indexed, and then it's very fast. So this science of storing experience or storing information is also a whole science. 
So you have to basically save it so that when you need it, it just comes very fast. And it's not how the information exists that makes it useful. And then, I, then when you are in a new case or in a new situation, you retrieve what's common. And this is, an, again, a picture, just a picture that tells you what happens. And I want you to just look at this picture. And there is these blue things, the red things, and then there are black things. And these nodes are copied. All the blue things were copied as steps of the past solution. So this thing still works, this thing works, this thing works, this thing works, and then eventually the red things are things you skipped. Uh, nothing of these worked, so you have to, or, or, or these, I don't know, the red are from a different uh, problem. They are putting two problems together, and eventually the black things are the things that you have to do from scratch. So now you solve problems by basically building a solution of reusing parts of past problems. This enables this reuse way of doing very, very, very complex things, all these very long things, without basically any search, because you are only in this validation algorithm. You are not searching for a solution. You are checking if this choice there, the blue choice, is still legal. And if it is, you just do it. So you go from a search problem to literally a validation problem and then when you don't validate then you search but it's maybe it's just for a part of the problem all the rest you know how to do so a classical example of this which is a, a long paper is route planning not exactly by using traffic or maybe but by using your preferences so for example if you save the route of going this this is your library of routes this is the yellow the orange route the blue route and the green route and then when you have to go from a point there to some point over there, you basically use the three routes, parts of it. So you use the green completely, then you do a little bit of extra red in the past to do so. Then you attach the blue, and then you basically switch to the orange, and then you are done. So the reason why we did this, and it's actually, it actually it works really well, is because uh, uh, when we talked with firefight uh, firefighters, emergency services, you know that they actually uh, build upon their own experience. They don't do ways at all for firefighters. I mean, trust me, they do not use ways. And the reason is because they are used to, they know the streets and they are used to some routes. And for them, everything is about these 20 routes they know on the city. Uh, and basically they attach to the routes they know that work rather than really, okay, I'm not going to go through places I've never seen. And so this is like a, this problem solving. So this is the first thing I told you, and then I'll tell you two more things. It's the same topic of reuse. But here it's like about basically solving a problem, saving the problem, indexing the problem, retrieving the problem, and reusing all these multiple similar problems until eventually you solve a very difficult problem by combining solutions. OK. Another example I'm going to show you, and there it comes from this. Oh, what is the problem with this approach? One of the problems of this approach is that this reuse thing, imagine that going from this red dot here to that red destination dot, there was a magic highway uh, over this side that was much faster than reuse. So the problem with reuse is that it saves a lot of time to solve the problem, but it might not be optimal because you are using pieces that might not be the best for this particular situation. So there is always this trade-off between, OK, is it good? Am I say doing it fast? Or so I'm going to reuse, but I may trade off optimality or quality. So now keep that in mind and let's move to the next uh, topic. So I've done robot soccer many times in my life. And one thing you have to understand is, is the following. Uh, I, I'll, I'll, I'll run this. I just stopped the video for a second. In this video, if I've never seen robot soccer, basically there are two teams and they are distinguished by their tops, which you cannot see. It doesn't matter. Uh, but what matters is that they are planning where to send the ball, where to position themselves, exactly like a planning does. So you decide the state, you put the goal, I have to receive a pass, and eventually you position these. 
and you have to do it. So I'll show you this and then I'll delve into the example of why this is reused. Look at this robot, passes the ball there, passes back, chip kicks, and you score from this time. Now, you have to understand something that's very important about this, besides being a wonderful goal, and I will show it again, is that, uh, look at that. You know, think about this. This is a computer. This is an algorithm doing this. It's no human joysticking these robots. It's no human deciding where they go. Nothing. And more, you have to understand something. We have never seen this example before, never. So this is really a problem of AI to solve problems. So the planner basically looks, okay, look, the ball is back there, positions this one is open, that one goes to a position where it's open, passes back, and this one ship kicks over, and this one scores from this side. All these done by a machine. You understand? This is like something that this is the, the I part of AI. This is intelligence, whatever they are doing. And you know what? Wherever these, whatever they, the, the opponents were, a different plan will come up. And I can show you more videos of this, but it's something that we have to understand that is really uh, magic, one way or another, how this planner figures this out by itself. The only thing here is that there are opponents here. And as there are opponents, it's very hard to plan when things are changing. So one wonders where should they go as things change. So a method that we use, and here is the reuse part, I want to just, uh, so if you never saw, I don't know if you know about uh, RRT, but it's a search mechanism that is very easy to search for a position to a path. You basically start in a place, you want to some other place. And uh, in fact, uh, let's show this one here. Uh, it's actually very beautiful because it's like this. You explore all possible uh, paths, but the way you explore is to like this, where you are in some point, and maybe here, you are in some point, and you literally have two choices. You pick a point randomly in the space, absolutely randomly, or you pick the actual goal. So in fact, let me, even here it says better. So you pick a random target, and when you pick a, a, a random point, you pick with some probability, or you pick the goal where you want to go with some probability. This is to find a path through these moving robots. You have to find a path and basically have to decide, and you search the search tree, to see if you can find the path very easily. But because they are always moving, you are trying to eventually always, with some probability P going there, if nothing would be like moving, P would be equal to one and you would find a straight line. As things are moving, you are going to search with some probabilities, random things to see if you can avoid the, 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 the opponents or the moving obstacles. And here is an example of a path going from here to there and how it search. It expands everything here and then it finally finds a path to go to the goal by searching all around. The interesting thing here is like this, how do we do this search if we have past experience of going from this point to this? And the only thing I'm going to tell you is this final, this algorithm that instead, and this is, instead of doing like with probability P you go to the goal and with probability one minus P you go random, you now save the past path. So you basically know how you went from here to there last time, which is milliseconds ago, because you are always replanning. You now know how, what is the path, and you use that path to guide your search. So with probability P, you go to the goal, like, you know, P equals 0.7. With probability, if you trust the past experience and nothing moves very much, with probability Q, let's say 0.2, you go to a past point. With probability 0.1, you go random. And therefore, you can very effectively find this particular kind of like a, uh, paths, and I'm going to show you, oops, I don't have the other video, but that's what actually generates all these paths. Finally, I'm just going to tell you one more thing about these, uh, now in an MDP framework, 
And the Markov decision process is a little bit heavy in math. So we started with like drawings of trees, then we saw videos, and now we'll see a little bit of math. And let me just explain to you what this is. Again, it's the same thing over and over again. Basically, when you want to solve a task, it doesn't really matter. And if you have a library of policies which tell you how to solve past problems with different reward functions. So you basically know how to solve past problems and you save them in a library. You, if you have someone that tells you this is the most similar past problem you have in the past, then beautifully we solve, we find the policy to the new problem by basically doing the following. Again, with some probability, you choose an action of the past. With some other probability, you choose a new action. And with one minus psi times one minus epsilon, you go random. So you're going to find a solution by basic being biased by the past, exploring the randomness, and going towards the goal in the particular kind of like uh, exploitation mode. And we did, with this, we introduced, we, this is what we call pi reuse strategy, and uh, this is the same thing, and it enables us to do the following, which in AI, is very important, which is suppose you have some kind of like little maze and you have a reward of going to that point. Now, when you have this problem, suppose now that you have the reward jumping and you have reward here, reward there, these little kind of squares, reward here, reward there, reward there, and you have solved omega one through omega five past tasks which means that you have a path from going from anywhere to this one where you have the gold and everywhere to this one where you have the gold and you have this. And now you have a new task where the reward is up there. And the question becomes, uh, or the question or means like uh, the, 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 the reuse is like this. You can imagine that reuse uh, this particular task for is not very useful for tasks omega, omega four and omega new. Uh, they don't, res they are not very similar, but this omega five is really good because it's basically the reward is in the same place, just shifted a little bit in open space. So most of the actions are the same, except inside of these little kind of last uh, task, uh, omega one is not that bad. Omega two is worse and omega three is as bad as omega four. And basically we did that and we can show that eventually, and here you, you can very well, but different methods of trying to use the different policies would lead to one that is much better than the other. And here I can show that this is policy pi one, pi two, which are the worst, and then, uh, or uh, pi two and pi three, and then pi one, pi five is the best. And the algorithm is able to find that this pi five is the one that actually uh, helps the most. So I actually don't uh, have a, um, I forgot, I don't have a conclusion slide, but my conclusion, and this is the last thing I said, uh, 24 minutes, so I was asked to talk 25. So uh, you have to understand one thing is that um, no matter where we are, uh, we have to develop algorithms that are continuous. They remember what they've done in the past. These are like examples where what was done in the past is actually reused, but always with some degree of eventually not uh, uh, being sure whether it's right or wrong. So this is the, why we call this probabilistic reuse. Anyway, uh, thank you very much. So I talked about these three things uh, and uh, all within the same uh, flavor of this continuous thing. And uh, I didn't put my, email address in the first one, but uh, it's just uh, Manuel of Luz at CMU or Manuel of Luz at JP Morgan. It, it's uh, both work, .com or .edu. Okay, I'll take some questions and, um, and uh, thank you very much for having me. Do, is there time for questions or one question? Anybody has a question? Yeah.
I cannot say it. Uh, mm. Okay, sorry. I cannot say. In fact, yeah. No questions? Nobody has questions about the reuse? Yes, thank you. Ciao. Right.